All right, this came in a lot earlier than I expected. This is the SKE UPS battery backup. This is a SK1500 VA, super heavy. This is all the specs here. So you have a 1500 VA, 900 watt output capacity, 24 volt, and uh, the dimensions are right here as well. Just lots of lists of very powerful stuff. This is a very good battery backup and it's really, really inexpensive compared to other battery backups. But we're gonna test it out. You can save your projects or anything that you're working on from completely crashing, basically. You have a user manual here. That broke. But uh, it's all protected with this foam here. Look how tiny this is, and it's 11 pounds. You do have your cable here and your power. So on the back, this does have eight outlets. These are surge protected, and these are battery and surge protected. Ethernet in and out port. And then this is the breaker right here. Input for power. So this will charge whenever you have it plugged in. So it'll save some battery basically, and it'll power on whenever a power goes out. It's very stable, it's automatic, and it's the best protection you can get. It's a really good insurance quality item. And it's fairly quiet for the size. You can store this in the back of your entertainment center or something like that. When you have power, it won't make that noise. That'll only make the UPS noise when you run out of power. But it looks like the battery is already turned on, so I don't have to open it. Unlike the other one from APC UPS, you have to open up the battery. This one you do not. This is good for PCs, routers, POS systems, communication devices, such as a home phone or if you want to charge your cell phone, it's laptops, monitors. I recommend also having power banks as well if you just want to charge your phone by itself so you don't have to waste the power out of this. You can use it for more important things. Here's the user manual right here. Shows all the information that you need to know. Also, do not have this into another surge protector or a, you know, extension cord. Have it as is because it's grounded. Make sure it's grounded to the direct outlet of the power that you're going to. I figured out a location on where I want to put it. Now I'd recommend calculating all the peripherals you need uh, to be able to power this up. But this does have an LCD display, which has all of your different functions. Input for charging, output for load, load level, how much you're consuming. You have your battery level, how much you have left. Right there is mute, turn it once. You'll have a 10 second increment between each beep. Press it again for the power button right there, and then you can turn it on mute. That's for battery backups. So right now I have two devices plugged into it, and I can show you right here. All right, so I have two on the battery backup itself right here. So I have my Mac mini right here, and on top I have my monitor. And then right here I just have a surge protector for the lights themselves. It will not be battery backup, so it'll just do a surge protection. So if the power goes out, this will just turn off safely. And you have four of those outlets right there, and four of the battery backup outlets, which will stay on for a certain amount of time. So whatever you need to do, save your projects or whatever. I have this most importantly on the most important devices. That's what I recommend you keeping it on. Don't keep it on a coffee maker. Don't keep it on dumb stuff. But I mean, if you want, if, you, if you're rich and you just want to save your coffee maker, use the affiliate link. So I have my Mac mini right there. It doesn't consume a whole lot of power, but it also has connected devices, which means I will also have safer SD cards. It'll have like safe protected mouse keyboards and everything else like that, that's powered it. So even devices that are connected to that, it'll also save all that, so. All right, so I've been using it in the background pretty much daily for about two, three weeks now. Right here. I've been metering it for a few days right there five days 3.497 kilowatts an hour is the rating and it does have 0.7 amps 20 watts low all the way up to 85 watts high i also did test it without the connected devices this is with connected devices but i'm only using 85 watts out of the said 900 or whatever it is rated at so i'm using a fraction of it so this means it'll last a lot longer which is good i can have my projects on there but right now this is what it's looking like right now it's using 65 watts on my mac but when idle i believe i have the i'll throw up the notes here if i still have them but when it's idle it should take you know a pretty good amount this one as you can see we're using 92 watts now so it's using more to be able to charge it i did do a little charge test of it too if you have a ton of power outages or just if you live somewhere hot rainy something like that your house power goes out you have risks of damaging your product this will help you save it all right so say that you're working on a three-hour project or whatever and your power happens to go out, it works in an instant, as you can see. The power's off, 
and the battery backup kicked in. It's meant to be able to just give you more time when the power goes out. That way you can easily save your files or work whatever you're on, properly shut it down and have it from breaking. This can save you thousands and thousands of dollars if you have if you have super expensive audio recording equipment you can easily hook one of these up so we have it plugged in with the speakers xbox and the tv it has a sub here as well so it's going to be packing a punch we're going to see if it actually tur even turns on so let's go ahead and do this so the speakers turn on tv turned on Xbox turned on and we're looking at, wow, it dropped immediately. As soon as it drops to 25 or close to that, I'm gonna turn it off. Let's just see how long. It should take like a few minutes to maybe an hour at least. I'm gonna look up the wattage and then for the Xbox Series X and then like compare it to the total wattage that I have here. I'm gonna go to load up a game so we actually run more power off of the Xbox and it's still going good. Right now it is currently 618. So we roughly started about a minute ago, two minutes ago, shopping in the game. I'm gonna turn on the fan because it's pretty hot and I don't want this thing to blow up just in case it gets super hot. But we're still chilling at 75%. I'm not even sure if you can see the monitor, but you know, I'll, I'll check in once I see it drop in person. All right, it's been about a good 30 minutes, I'd say. And uh, it really hasn't dropped at all. And it's really annoying from the beeping. It hasn't dropped at all. It mainly the beeping is bugging me, so I need to kill it faster. Look at this, no way. I figured out how to turn off the buzzing. So as you see right where battery level is, right there, you just press the power button once to turn it on or off. So now it's off. Very simple, it doesn't make a whole lot of noise. It does get warm, not super, super hot. Like I can touch it, it's not burning my hand, it's just warm. And I've been using it for about 30 minutes. On the bottom, it's probably the hottest part because the battery's literally right here so that's the reason why you don't want to have it on carpet because it's the hottest part literally so don't have this on carpet this thing is actually hot to the touch the sides however are pretty warm nice and toasty that's pretty much everything about the product if you guys want to check it out link is in the description down below to buy this thing is a beast it works perfectly and it, it's really good link is in the description to buy though 100 recommend it i already have two of these so and i bought one with my own money because it's definitely really good.